So Duke has four new plants coming on board this year, right? I think that's right, You've yes. You've got two NAC gas, two coal. Mm -hmm. And it, this comes at a time when we have absolutely zero clarity from Washington on what energy policy is going to be. So how on earth do you make decisions and huge financial investments in that environment? Well, it's very, very tough. But, you know, we started the production and, and construction on those and the planning for those a long, long time ago. So changes have occurred, obviously. But one of the things I think that we try to do really is think about diversity. Uh, and so not only are we building the two coal, the two natural gas, but we are also building 770 megawatts of, of wind this mm -hmm. year. So I think if you, you know, don't put all your eggs in a basket, uh, uh, play a diversity card, and over the long run, which these are 40-year life, you know, investments, over the long run, I think that'll work for well, you. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I'd assume you don't see any comprehensive energy policy, climate policy, getting through Washington this year, right? No, not at all. So, so given that, um, are you holding back on making big investment decisions in this country? Well, we, we are not, I would say, you know, we're trying to, in fact, as I said, we built, we're building a lot of wind this year, uh, even in, with the uncertainty in terms of our production tax credits going to get extended or not. What I would say, though, is in 2013, 2014, that kind of time frame is going to, uh, we're not going to be able to invest as easily or as, as with much clarity as we can. And now. that's very important because that investment correlates directly to, to jobs. jobs. Another thing yeah. that, that correlates to jobs is hydraulic fracturing, right. fracking, which we're really seeing a boom um, in Ohio, Pennsylvania, that area now. And what's fascinating is France recently banned hydraulic fracturing. And so now billions in French investment money has come to that region. Right. I'm wondering what Duke's stance is on that. And does Duke stand to benefit from that, from all that money coming here? Well, I think, uh, you know, the fracking issue is complex as any of these issues are. And, and one reality, we've been fracking for a long, yes. long the time. the technology's gotten better and a little different. It's gotten better and different, but uh, it, it still can be done safely, I believe. That's, uh, that's the first thing I would say. The other thing I would say is shale gas has uh, taken the price of gas down tremendously. So and that is changing uh, the way we think tremendously because uh, when you think about what plants are you going to build, mm -hmm. the, your natural inclination now is to build gas turbines uh, as opposed to building nuclear or building uh, coal. And so it is changing decision-making processes, uh, but the biggest impact is, is on price of gas. 25% of the energy that Duke produces in the United States comes from nuclear, I right. believe. Um, you're the third largest nuclear power producer in the country. Post Fukushima, what's the future of nuclear for your company? Well, you know, we're in the process now of uh, uh, pursuing uh, an operating license and construction license uh, through the NRC. And you're still going through with that? We're still going through the, with the licensing process. Uh, we will take, uh, you know, our steps there in a disciplined way. Uh, we believe nuclear is uh, a very viable and important alternative for us, and so uh, we, we still believe in nuclear. Having said that, I do think that there will be delays in nuclear driven probably by shale gas, actually. It's just so expensive. It's very expensive. And so, you know, you, in the past, you've had this classic uh, balance between high capital costs but yes. low fuel costs. Yes. Now with gas, you've got a low capital cost and a relatively low f fuel cost. So it is changing, uh, you know, the, the playing field. Given the low, very low prices of natural gas right now in this country, um, but also, of course, increasing demand always, um, is the demand at a place where it warrants you to hire in a substantial way at this point in time? You know, we are certainly hiring as we're adding new new plants, and uh, the biggest hiring is probably in the wind area where we're adding uh, new uh, new facilities. Last year we added 45 uh, new solar sites, and so we add some jobs there. Uh, Those just aren't job intensive. They're not job intensive as much, but you are adding construction jobs, right. and those are temporary, but we need any job we can get today. And so, you know, we're, we, are, we are hiring, but we're not hiring in, in big, big numbers. Yeah. Right. And a final point on that, is there, is there one regulation in Washington that is holding the company back from hiring more? Is there something on the political front? You know, I don't think you can cite one regulation. I think that the real issue is just a lack of clarity. Uh, as any business, if you show us the rules, and we don't want bad rules, but if you show us the rules, we'll figure out a way right. to operate within the boundaries there. We have no clarity right now.